Well, as planned on that Sunday, Steve and I geared up, got all set to head out and ski tour up one of the mountains in our area with four of our five dogs in tow. I was planning and preparing everything. I was pretty excited, showing you all the different layers of clothes to wear, gear to pack, safety equipment, just supplies in general needed for this type of adventure. Put the uh, fruit in the top of the pack so it's easily accessible. Keep the 20 bucks in there just in case there's a Tim's halfway up. Another key essential thing to do is make sure the hot tub is ready. Chemicals up to par oh. for when you get home from your ski. <laughs> having a hot tub, a pre-ski hot tub. For a few different reasons, we need to be rather specific about when we arrive to the top of the mountain. So usually we only give ourselves just the right amount of time for our two hour climb. However, we made a bit of a mistake this particular day. We didn't leave early enough. We didn't really allow any room for error with Clyde and Norton who were brand new to this type of ski touring and didn't know the way to go. As luck would have it, they went the wrong direction right at the beginning. And although they did come back, it set us back 30 minutes. A 30 minutes we really couldn't spare if we were gonna make it to the top of the mountain before dark. Hi Norton, good boy. I know. Hi Riley. Hi Riley. Hey buddy. Oh, that's a good Christmas tree. Good boy, buddy. Hi. Good boy. Good boy, sweetie. Good boy. Good girl, Hannah. Hannah's 12. Look at how fit you are, Hannah. Look at how fit you are, pretty girl. Riley's pretty much almost 12 too. The weather also wasn't really on our side. We were in pretty thick fog the entire way up and the further we climbed, the more stormy it was looking at the top as well. We got so far up and then Steve made the call that we should turn back. He just knew that we could get into trouble arriving at 6,500 feet elevation, nearing dark in a storm without headlights and with two new ski touring dogs. It's not very often we've ever had to turn back, but I do trust Steve's judgment 100%. Steve has spent many years ski mountaineering and climbing around the world. He has ascended the Matterhorn twice. He's successfully completed and guided the Hout route, the Ute route, I guess you could say which is a five to seven day ski traverse in the Swiss Alps. He's done that at least a dozen times. It's a traverse that he took me on and we completed in 2015 in six days. And we did it again partially in 2017. Steve has climbed the East Ridge of Mount Logan, which is the highest peak in Canada, a very technical 28 day climb. and he sailed his 43-foot steel catch boat across the Atlantic, just to name a few. Steve has sold his steel sailboat back in 2018 in order to get the boat of his dreams. That boat is currently being built overseas. It is a 51 or 52-foot steel sail-assisted trawler and it is this boat 
that we hope to bring back across the Pacific in the near future. Good job there. <laughs> Hi, baby. Clyde has his snowshoes on. Although this particular ski touring trip seemed like a little bit of a failure to me, really just in terms of being able to put together a proper video, it was still very much a, a successful trip. Not another soul in sight, alpine fresh air, great exercise, happy dogs. We really came to the realization that both Clyde and Norton can easily do this again. And every day on the slopes, ends with a lovely soak in the hot tub. Cheers, dear. Cheers. The only real downside to skiing back down the way you came up is that the skiing sucks. You kind of have to ski beside your up track so that the dogs have something to run on. Going through the thick brush, I ended up impaling myself on a small tree that was sticking out of the snow, ripped my ski pants and left me with a little bit of a war wound. A couple of weeks ago, I took a trip out to where I'm building the tiny little cabin, the cabin on the cliff. I just wanted to lay my eyes on things and see just how much snow I'm gonna be up against over these next few months. Luckily, there is active logging nearby, so the old rail grade is being plowed this year. The drive out there at this time of year is two hours, and that means it's a two hour drive back home and half an hour to get down to the cabin site and another half an hour at least climb back up from the cabin to the truck. So a five hour day of just travel at this time of year to get to that spot. So here are the stairs. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm not clearing any stairs. I'll have to make stairs for myself to go down. Got a shovel. I've got a shovel on my pack with me and I got my chainsaw and I got Hannah and Riley. Too bad I didn't bring my GT snow racer. I could just, I could just toboggan down here. I took a couple of shovels to shovel off the subfloor of the cabin. I took my chainsaw, climbing harness and rope in hopes to be able to cut down that tree in front of the cabin blocking the view. I took fire starter, a pot, and some homemade soup to have a hot lunch out there. Yeah, I wish I could film coming down here, but I can't. My hands are full. I think I've said that three times now, but it's too bad because it's deep. It's really deep. I need snowshoes. I think that's the next thing I need to get. Oddly enough, I don't have snowshoes, but that... It's gonna be essential if I'm gonna come out here with this much snow. Okay. Did not expect this much snow at all. There's gonna be snow, but anyway, I'm gonna shovel this off. And the only thing I didn't get done was chopping that tree down. It just felt too unsafe. And I didn't really give myself enough time, so I took all that stuff down there for nothing. But that's the way it goes sometimes. I was due for some exercise, so it ended up being okay. It was definitely a good reality check going out there and seeing all the snow. I mean, I'm really up against a lot if I want to do anything out there in the next couple of months. But where there's a will, there is a way.
little Starlink update. They contacted us back about our post-avalanche problems, post-avalanche off the roof, satellite stopped working. They had offered us a refurbished dish at a discounted price. So Steve said, well, I may as well try and fix the one that we've got. They quickly replied back immediately and said, do not touch the dish. We will send you a new one free of charge. So Steve went up on the roof, took the dish down, hauled in the cable, and as he hauled the cable in, he noticed that there was an area of the cable that was wrecked that he hadn't noticed before. So a little splicing was done, and the dish is back up on the roof, and we are back in action. The little things are exciting. I can now sit and binge watch some of my favorite YouTube channels. When you live in an area that has all four seasons like we do here, there's a reason that winter brings a change of pace and a different set of priorities. Winter is a time to rest and regenerate and manage your snow. Both Steve and I spend much of this time planning and preparing for the overwhelming amount of projects that we want to get done in the spring, summer, and fall months. I've been feeling very grateful lately, grateful for the health of our entire family, the quality time that we've all been spending together lately. It's just been very, very nice. There are many senior citizens in this household, and it doesn't take much for anyone's health to take a turn. So these are really, truly the very best of times. But I'm sure there's got to be something I can build, something I can make from my pile of scrap wood.